This is a 30 minute flow preparing you for forearm stand Pinchamayarasana. We will begin in Vajrasana sitting on the heels. Feel free to pause the video and spend some extra time grounding and settling into your practice here. When you are ready to find movement, we'll start with some neck rolls. So exhaling left ear to left shoulder, chin to chest, and then right ear to right shoulder. And just starting to follow your breath there, maybe lingering in spots that feel a little extra good today. Starting to find that sync of movement of body and movement of breath. And then we'll switch to some shoulder rolls. So either moving the shoulders together or separately, just take some big round rolls of the shoulders. And then let's grab your block. Place your block between your hands, between the thumb and the index finger, and start to squeeze inward. We're gonna work on uh, what I call four point arms. It's the base of any forearm position. So we want the elbows hugged towards each other, shoulders down, and then press forward through the elbows and then hug your shoulder blades into the back. We'll release that and try it again. I'll turn so you can see a different angle. So elbows hug towards each other, right in line with the shoulders, shoulders descending away from the ears, and then press forward through your elbows and then hug the shoulder blades together. And then keep all of those elements engaged. We'll take the arms up overhead. So elbows starting to come in around the face, keep squeezing into that block. And then exhale, lower the arms back to where they started. Inhale, bringing those arms up alongside the ears. Keep squeezing into the block. Exhale, lower the arms back parallel to the floor. One more time. Inhale, arms alongside the ears. Notice your front ribs here and try to hug them into the torso. And then exhale, lower the arms one more time. We'll go ahead and release that block. Place it off to the side. And then let's find that same position of the arms without the block. So just imagine that that block is there and your arms are kind of hugging into it. So elbows drawing in towards each other, shoulders down away from the ears, elbows pressing forward, and then shoulder blades pulling together in your back. Strong engaged arms. And then go ahead and release the arms, let that go. Just keep those four points in mind as we start to move into some forearm work later. And they'll begin to flow our way through cat-cow. Inhaling heart forward into cow pose. Exhaling, rounding the spine into cat. A few more rounds with your breath, following your own pace here. And then we'll start, find some side to side cat cow action. So right ear and right hip pulling towards each other and then left ear and left hip, getting that side to side stretch. Continuing to move with your breath. And we'll begin to find some barrel rolls. So hips to the right, find cat pose. Hips to the left, find cow. You can keep it broken down like that or just start rolling your way through it. And then we'll reverse. So hips to the right, cow. Hips to the left, cat. Again, breaking that down into four parts or just rolling right on through it. And then we'll inhale back into a neutral spine, so table. Toes on top, we'll press into the tops of the feet, lift the knees just a couple inches off the ground. Feel your low belly begin to engage. Exhale, plant those knees back down on the floor. And then we're gonna to start to find cat-cow cow, cat, cow, isolated to the upper spine. So inhale, rounding your shoulder blades, stretching them apart, and then exhale, pull the shoulder blades together, let your heart pull forward. So trying to isolate this movement just between the shoulder blades. So low back is staying very neutral. You can stay there and table with the knees under the hips to do this. Option two, start to walk the knees back behind the hips and continue this isolated pulling together of the shoulder blades and then spreading them apart. Option three, same motion, but in plank pose. So following your breath here for a few rounds, feeling that movement of the shoulder blades together and then apart keeping the core very engaged. And we'll exhale back into table. Inhale, take your right hand up towards the sky and then pull that right arm underneath the left, pinky edge of the hand anchoring into the ground. We're not gonna come all the way down onto the shoulder. And then start to pull back, so hips towards your heels, anchoring that left hand into the floor. This should be a stretch on the outer edge, outer lower edge of your armpit, so serratus and lat area. And then we'll switch to the other side, inhale left hand to the sky and feed that left arm underneath the right, anchor the pinky edge of the hand into the ground 
and then pull the hips back. And then right back into table, tuck your toes under. Let's finally settle back into downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward to plank. Exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Let's continue there a couple of rounds with your breath. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, tuck it back, downward facing dog. The next time you settle into plank, we'll find that cat shape in the upper back, just the upper back. Turn on serratus, the area below the armpit. Keep that engaged and start to pull your heart forward. Press forward on the toes, chaturanga as you bend the arms, elbows hugged in. Inhale right back up to plank and exhale downward facing dog. We'll do that one more time. Inhale forward into plank. Cat the upper back, feel the shoulder blades spread. Keep serratus engaged as you pull the heart forward. Press forward on the toes. Exhale chaturanga, elbows hugged in. Inhale right back up to plank and exhale downward facing dog. And let's just take a little stroll to the front of your mat, finding your Uttanasana forward fold. Nice deep bend to the knees. We'll roll ourselves vertebrae by vertebrae all the way up to stand. Finding your Tadasana at the front of the mat and we'll inhale, hands up towards the sky. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana, starting to find our Sriya Namaskar A, sun salutation. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. Exhale, fold, plant your hands, and let's step back to plank. Same engagement into chaturanga. So cat your upper back, feel serratus anterior turn on, pull the heart forward, press forward on the toes, chaturanga as you lower, and this time go ahead and inhale into your back bend, low cobra, high cobra, or up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Settling into a couple breaths here. And take a little stroll to the front of the mat on your next inhale, ending up in your Ardha Uttanasana flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive to lift hands to the sky. Exhale, hands lowering down into heart center. Good. Let's do that again. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. And then this time you can jump or step back into plank if you're stepping, chaturanga if you're jumping. Inhale into your back bend when you're ready. And exhale, pull it back, downward facing dog, settling into your down dog for a few breaths, reconnecting to the rhythm of your breath. If you lost that rhythm at all as we've added movement. Inhale, prepare to jump or step forward and then exhale, move feet to hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold, inhale, reverse swan dive, lift up, reach up, exhale, hands down into heart. One more round, building some heat here. Inhale, reach, exhale, fold, inhale, flat back, exhale, jump or step back, finding your rhythm and your flow here, inhaling into your back bend when you're ready. Exhale, downward facing dog. With your next inhale, take the right foot up towards the sky. And then exhale, step the right foot between your hands, coming up into warrior two, front heel back arch alignment. Rotating all the way into the shoulder socket, we're gonna turn the palms towards the sky, and then exhale, turn the palms back down. One more time, deep rotation to turn the palms up. Keep the upper arms rotated as they are, and turn just the lower arms back to turn the palms to the ground. And then drop those arms behind your back. Let's find a clasp pulling the palms together and starting to lean forward over that front thigh, extended uh, side angle with the clasp behind the back. Get really, really long from the back heel through the crown of the head. And then let's inhale right into a reverse warrior, bending that right arm to grab the back lower part of the skull, hug that elbow in towards the face and press up through the elbow. Let's go ahead and straighten that front leg for reverse trikonasana. Feeling the length all the way up the right side of the body. And then we'll inhale, bend that front knee, 
Exhale, windmill hands to the ground. Vinyasa, one or two legs. Any transition of your choice will end up in downward facing dog before switching to the other side. So when you're ready, we'll take our left foot to the sky on an inhale. Again, step it forward, coming up into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Deep rotation of the arms and the shoulder socket to turn the palms skyward. And then exhale, turn the palms back down. This time, keep the upper arms rotated. Just turn those lower arms as you take the palms to the ground. And then go ahead and clasp the hands, the hands behind the back. Start to lean and lengthen over that front thigh. Knuckles reaching for your back heel. Long line of energy all the way up the right side of the body. And then reverse your warrior, bending that left arm to grab the hand around the low part of the skull where a low ponytail would be. Press up through that elbow, straighten the front leg for reverse trikonasana, and keep hugging your left elbow in towards the face. And then we'll exhale, bend that front knee and windmill hands all the way to the ground. Again, choice of one or two legged vinyasa or any other transi transition that helps to reconnect with your rhythm here. We'll inhale and come forward into plank. Option to drop the knees or keep them lifted. We'll walk one forearm down and then the other, and then hand and hand. And then we'll just repeat there, each round changing which forearm goes down first, and then which hand comes back first. So just walking between forearm plank and regular plank. Again, the knees can be down for this. Make sure that your neck and the non-necessary shoulder muscles are as easy and relaxed as possible, and that your breath is nice and steady. Next time you settle into forearm plank, we'll start to walk the feet in for dolphin. Go ahead and just let your head drop and really allow those feet to walk in as close to the arms as possible so that your hips can get nice and high. If you feel pretty tight in the legs, maybe walk the feet out to the edges of the mat and really bend into the legs, get little froggy legs and help take your hips a little bit higher towards the sky. Walk your feet in any amount closer to the arms. Starting to find our alignment of forearm stand. And then one hand at a time, let's come back onto hands and step it back, downward facing dog. With your next inhale, prepare to jump or step forward and then exhale, move to the top of the mat. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bow and grab opposite elbows or maybe the head or the feet. Just find some grab for the hands and get a little sway side to side in the torso. Really let your head just hang heavy. And then we'll bend our knees deeply and roll up one more time, vertebrae by vertebrae, all the way to stand. At the top of your Tadasana, inhale, hands to the sky, and then exhale, let's sit back into chair pose, Utkatasana. Long low back. Let's cross your thumbs or latch your thumbs above your head, and then just act as though you're trying to pull those thumbs apart. Try to soften around the base of the neck. Let's put the weight over into the right foot, flamingo your left foot, and softly fly back into warrior three, pulling forward through your latch thumbs, pressing back through your left heel. We'll one time bend your right knee and then inhale, straighten the leg. And then this time as we bend that right knee, we'll step back to crescent pose, hands to the sky. Keep pulling those thumbs apart. Keep softening the shoulders. And then let's just hit rewind. So lean forward, reach forward, find your warrior three. Pull that knee in towards the belly and place it right back down into chair pose. Exhale, fold over your chair, reach down and back. Inhale, reach forward and up. Let's do that again with the breath, exhaling to fold, inhaling to lift. One more time. And then as your hands reach to the sky this time, latch the thumbs. Again, find that tension between them pulling apart. Begin to put the weight into your left foot and lift the right foot up into flamingo and then start to fly it back. Warrior three, really pressing forward through your thumbs and your fingertips. One time bend that left leg and straighten and then bend and softly step back into crescent pose. Hands still pulling apart, softening through the shoulders, 
front ribs hugged into your torso. And then we'll start to rewind, lean forward, fly into warrior three. Hug that right knee in and then step it down into chair pose. Again, with your breath, exhale to fold, reach down and back. Inhale, reach forward and up. A couple more times with the breath. And then the next time you fold, let's catch the hands behind the back for a clasp and let the hands start to fall side to side. So as the hands fall to the right, the shoulders will open to the left and then vice versa. The knees can be bent as much as you need here. And then let's go ahead and sit all the way down, releasing the hands, coming into boat pose, Navasana. We'll exhale and lower into Ardha Navasana, half boat, and inhale, come right back up, Navasana. Feel free to modify this as you need or make it more difficult as you need. If your low back is sensitive, you can bring the forearms to the ground behind you and do the same general action with that support of the arms. We'll continue for a few more rounds, trying to keep the neck, the jaw, the face as soft as possible. If you'd like to make it more difficult, maybe take a few rounds with straight legs as you come into boat. And then let's bend the legs, roll right over the legs, come into a plank chaturanga and then a back bend, cobra or up dog. Settling here for a moment, stretching out that core and right on back downward facing dog. We'll inhale and take right foot up towards the sky. Right knee to right arm on your exhale. Pull it in nice and tight. Inhale, right leg up and back. Bend the knee, flex your foot, stack your hips. Option to drop onto your left forearm and gaze under that right elbow as it bends out a bit. Let's come right back up onto both hands. Three-legged dog. Right knee to right arm as you step that right foot outside the right hand for lizard pose. Back knee can come to the ground. Start up on hands or fingertips and get lots of length through the spine. And then if you choose to lower onto forearms, try to keep that length. So I like to call it kind of pulling out of your turtle shell. So try to get rid of the hump on your upper back, heart pulling forward, lengthening through the crown of the head as well. That right knee can stay hugged in towards the arm, or you can let the knee fall out to the side, big toe side of the foot lifting off the mat. And we'll gradually walk back up onto your hands. Tuck your back toes under. Pull that right knee up into the arm. Hover for a moment with the foot off the ground. And then three-legged down dog. Exhale, right foot to the ground. And we'll switch sides. Inhale, left foot rises. Exhale, left knee, left upper arm. Inhale, up and back. And then find your open down dog. Option to drop onto your right forearm. Bending that left elbow out to the side as you gaze under the arm. And then right up and back to three-legged down dog. Left knee to left upper arm. And then step that left foot outside the left hand for lizard pose. Let's come down onto the right knee. Start on your fingertips and just get really long through the spine, through the crown of the head. And then maybe choose to come down onto forearms, keeping that length through the spine. So trying to get rid of any arch or hump in the upper back. Heart pulling forward, back of the neck long. Your choice to keep the left knee hugged in or to let that left knee open out to the side a bit. Big toe of your left foot lifting off the mat. And then we'll start to walk back up onto hands. Back knee lifts. Hug your left knee into the upper arm. Foot off the floor. And then three-legged down dog. Slowly lower your left foot back into downward facing dog. And then let's march out your legs a bit here. A little sassy. So as the right knee bends, let it draw across the left leg. And then same with the left leg. So you really get into those outer hips. Go ahead and lower down onto your knees. We're going to start to build into our forearm stand variations. Remembering that you definitely don't have to go into forearm stand ever here. If you do want to go upside down, feel free to locate to a wall at this point. So option one is forearm plank, maybe using the block between your thumb and index finger as a guide for hand placement. If you need extra strength here, maybe you play with lifting one leg at a time. So just remembering your four point arms that we built at the beginning of class as you're here, building that strength and creating lots of space around the neck. 
Option two, and you can definitely keep the block for this, is to walk into Dolphin and start playing with maybe taking one foot to the sky, starting to work on finding the stack or alignment that is necessary for going upside down, putting a little bit more weight into the arms. And as that weight gets added to the arms, just try not to dump into the neck or the shoulders. And then option three, of course, is forearm stand pinch in Mayurasana. So from your one-legged dolphin taking the foot up to the sky, just reaching through the toes and taking little hops until maybe you find a moment of balance. Letting your gaze be forward towards the hands to help find that balance. And then exiting as slowly as you came out. When you do come out and you're ready for a break, find your child's pose. Feel free to pause the video here if you'd like to find one or two more attempts at your forearm stand or to play around a little bit. When you are ready to continue, we'll start to wind it down and stretch it out a bit. So we'll come up into Vajrasana sitting on the heels. Let's find our eagle arms with the right arm underneath, palm to palm if you can. And then we'll just tip that eagle arm shape to the ground in front of us, anchoring the outer edges of both arms to the floor. Pull your, or walk your knees back so they're under your hips, and then start to pull your hips back a little bit towards your heels. This should be a nice release for that area beneath the armpit, the outer torso area in that region. And then walk the knees back in, tip the hips back to the heels. We'll reach wide, let the heart pull forward, and then round the spine, hugging your arms around the chest. Let's do that a couple more times with the breath. And then we'll find eagle arms with the left arm under. Same idea, tip it forward, outer arms anchoring into the ground. Knees come back be beneath the hips and then start to pull the hips back towards your heels, getting nice and long through the spine, finding and feeling that stretch. And then we'll start to walk the knees back in, lift up, let's find that seated cat-cow one more time. So big stretch back, heart forward, Exhale, spine rounds as you hug the arms around the chest. One more time with the breath. And then we'll come up to kneeling, hips over the knees, knees hip width apart. We'll find camel pose either with the hands on the low back, elbows hugging in, heart lifting up, or starting to walk your hands down onto your heels, keeping those thighs pressing forward. Head can stay lifted, or if your neck is okay with it, you can drop that head back a bit. Slowly lifting up, letting your head be the last thing to come up when you're ready, and we'll sit back onto the heels. Take your arms long out to the sides. We'll take right arm to the outside of the left thigh for a twist. Left hand can come behind you onto the floor, or it can wrap around the back for a half bind. Try to sit really tall into the twist and breathe low into the belly. Inhale, let's start to untwist, reach the arms wide again, and we'll go to the other side. Left arm reaching across to the outside of the right thigh, right hand reaching behind you for the floor or wrapping around the back for a half bind. Feeling wide and broad across the collarbones, softly gazing over your right shoulder, and just remember to keep breathing nice and deeply into the low belly. With your next inhale, let's untwist, and just come on over onto our sit bones, legs out in front of us. Dandasana, nice tall, long spine, thighs pressing down into the ground reaching the hands to the ceiling, and then exhale, fold forward over the legs. Try to keep that length up the spine, all the way through the back of the neck, through the crown of the head. Add as much bend to your knees as you need to to feel comfortable here. And maybe with your breath a couple times, lift up halfway, find some extra length, and then exhale, ease into that space. And 
then just start to unroll yourself, anchoring your feet. Let's lower all the way down onto the back. Bending your knees. We'll roll over onto your right side. We're going to place your left arm underneath the back with the palm facing away from your back. The hand can be in the small of your back or can be kind of where reverse prayer would be between the shoulder blades. And then you're going to roll back flat onto your hand. Knees can stay bent or they can stretch out to straight. And just encourage your left shoulder to release back towards the floor. Trying to soften those muscles in the left chest. When you're ready to exit this side, we'll bend the knees, roll back to the right, slide that left arm out, and then we'll switch. So roll over to the uh, left side, slide your right arm underneath. Again, it can be in the small of the back or between the shoulder blades, but palm face down. And then flatten out onto your hand and either keep the knees bent or straighten the legs. As you breathe here, trying to soften that right shoulder back towards the floor. And then let's go ahead and bend your knees again. Roll over to the left side, release the arm. Let your hand come down by your side. And then let's take feet a little bit wider than hip width. And we'll start to let the knees just fall side to side for a windshield wiper twist, moving with your breath and feeling free to linger anywhere that feels extra juicy and good today. Continue to twist here for as long as you'd like, but when you feel ready for Shavasana, just start to stretch out into your corpse pose. Settle in and feel free to stay for as long as you have time for. Namaste, yogis.